Hey, welcome back to the show. You are tuned in to DXB today. We can guarantee that you have five human beings on the sofa at the moment, all right? <laughs> we ain't lying to you. We ain't lying to you just yet. Why? We're talking all things AI and generative AI. Let's uh, introduce our next human guest to proceedings, the founder uh, of Audio Swim. Albert M. Carter. Albert, good to have you on board. Thank you for having me. You know, we kicked, we kicked off by asking, a bit, you know, or just highlighting the fact that, that AI and generative AI is having such an impact on so many different industries, none more so than the music industry at the moment. We've gone through an era when uh, people have been able to create their own music from their bedrooms and then things like that. How much, how, it, how is AI revolutionizing music at the moment? Um, it's, it's affecting music and revolutionizing it in such a positive way, honestly. Like, I think that if you know how to use AI and if you look at AI as a tool, um, then it can have a great impact on artists' careers. But if you look at it as a something that's against, you know, yeah. the music industry, then it definitely has the impact there as well. But um, it makes things simple. You know, AI really just makes things simple. If you know how to use it and you can get the job done faster, then use it and get the job done faster. And whereas before you would be spending money and employing a number of different yeah. technicians, a number of different experts, you can pretty much control the process yourself now, is that right? Yeah, yeah for the most part. I think that um, there's there's definitely a human element. Like humans still need to be there. It's not a, a, a just, you know, use the AI and be done with it. But um, I think that when it comes down to mixing, mastering, writing a song, all of that, it still has to have that human impact yeah. to get the feeling that music has. But um, yeah, AI just allows you to, you know, do things, especially like when it comes down to the post-production, do things that humans would take maybe eight hours to do they can do in you know five minutes you know so it just depends on how you use the technology well i was saying to cream earlier about i can notice visually if mm -hmm. something is ai right um but audio wise do you think the average listener can tell if something is ai generated to i them? think it's getting better and better um ai technology is getting better and better so it's harder to detect but for the trained ear you can pick it up right so um, recently, there was a release by Drake, and he had uh, Tupac and Snoop Dogg's AI voice on it, right? And for the average listener, they probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They wouldn't be able to say if, if this was Tupac or Snoop Dogg, but it was, you know, really AI. Um, but for me, I was able to pick up the cadence. I knew that it was Drake, and it was Drake's uh, tone of voice and all of that, just with uh, over top, uh, uh, I guess, the top line of uh, Snoop Dogg and, and Tupac. But. but is that ethical though? Because I mean, Snoop Dogg's. I mean, it, I mean, what if they don't give consent? Right. Well, it's rules in place. I think that you will not be able to take the likeliness of someone um, and make a profit off of it. If you're doing it in good fun, I think it's fine. Like if it's released on, you know, social media, YouTube. But when it comes down to like putting it on DSPs and streaming platforms, that's when it becomes a bit unethical because you're actually profiting off of somebody, someone else's likeliness. So um, I think that when you get into the crux of the legalities of it, it's, it's a bit more, um, I guess humans have some ways to go to catch up with technology at the moment. But um, technically, I think the rules in place are good for now. <laughs> Albert, what does this do to the meaning of an artist and their career? Because uh, the leading talent agency is having their biggest artists come and record their voice, their likeness, for, you, for licensing and for use without them actually physically being. So in theory, you could be dead as an artist and yep. still be creating new content. What does this do to the meaning of career and income? Um, I, I think that it has a positive impact if, you, if, it's, if it's looked at in the right way, right? So if you are assigning someone and you're using the likeness uh, of them after they go, and they, if they have made an impact on music um, to a point where it, you're, you're actually making those uh, deals happen, then I think that when they go on, then it, it's it's more of an impact. They can have more of an effect on what's happening. And then especially when it comes down to collaborations, when it comes down to putting things out there for syncs, but it has to go through the legal uh, uh, the legal uh, part of it. You know, I think that will be the, the impact. Albert, I don't have a musical bone in my body at all, <laughs> but do you think with the use of AI, anyone more or less can become a musician if they know how to use the program? Yes, I do. I do. I do think that because you're using the technology now. I think like, you know, back in the day, you would have to learn how to play the instruments, right? So yeah. you would have to play a piano, play a guitar, play um, the drums. Now you can just go on a computer and do that. But now you have to knew, know how to use the AI in order to instruct the, the machine to do it, you know, so what exactly you want. So I think that you are um, shifting the talent. I'm not going to say you're losing the talent, but you're shifting the talent from a person that knows how to play instruments to a person that knows how to use the AI to actually make the sound that they want. 
You know how you said a bit earlier on that, you know, it's it's just making us more efficient. It, do, yep. is there, do we run the risk of it making us lazier as well, though, to a certain degree? Could, uh, could you foresee, you know, a musician cutting corners rather than going down the route that we have done pr pr before? Uh, yes and no. I think that um, there, there, we do run that risk, but I think if you are um, involved in mu music and if you are a person that's a perfectionist, usually musicians yeah. are perfectionists, yeah, yeah. right? They're, they're not the type of people that just want anything out there. So I think that w within terms of that, um, we're not, they're not being lazy, but you do have the risk of cutting a few corners, but you could be so much more productive um, instead of doing one song, you could do 10 songs in the same amount of time, right? Yeah. So it's like, that's what AI is used for, right? To cut those corners. So you have to use it effectively. Yeah. But the majority of artists like really still have to do live shows to get yeah. and go on tours to get paid, right? Yeah, for sure. So that's sure. never going to change. No, nah, that's not that's not going to change. Although they do have holograms now, yeah. right? So yeah. Tupac was a hologram back in 2012, right? They were doing holograms of uh, shows. There's, there's the ABBA so, one down in London, London as well, isn't there? ABBA yeah. have got like a show in the West yep. End or something like that, all holograms. Yep. Yeah, so they, they do have that, but I mean, it would never be anything that's so, that the live show, like a live show is a live show. You're interacting with a crowd in a way that I don't think AI has the capability yet to do, so. I love that word, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank that you. is the key so, word. Hearing that word <laughs> a AI, lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Exactly. Albert, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Thank man. you for having me. We're going to have more of a conversation later, man. Sounds Cheers, great. brother. Nice one. Now, today's spotlight is on an AI powered platform offering users personalized guidance and strategies to navigate the complex world of finance and Web3. They are promoting a decentralized economy. This is Wisdomize. Hi everyone, my name is Fadad Zan. I'm CEO and co-founder of Wisdomize, an innovative fintech company that focuses on the interaction integration of AI into financial services. So in other words, it's a kind of innovative uh, fintech company that works at the intersection of finance, AI and blockchain. Uh, in principle, we are focusing on democratizing wealth creation. So we focusing on reducing the, uh, the gap in terms of income and wealth distribution uh, across uh, different like, segments of society. And we do that by leveraging and integrating artificial intelligence in financial services. We managed to, uh, to build, test and launch uh, the platform uh, last year. Generally speaking, the regulatory landscape is not as stable or as defined as it ideally should be, right? We always have like this question of what is the next thing that the regulator, the, uh, the kind of legal landscape would or would not allow us to do. There is always a bit of unclarity around it. I believe the business is typically running faster than the regulator. If we can maybe somehow reduce that gap is definitely a plus. My vision of the company is providing uh, to everyone on earth access to, I would say, advanced financial services, in particular asset and wealth management services, right? So I think the a big goal is to provide that access to everyone to democratize wealth creation globally. It's, it's a hub of innovation. I, the way I see it for the past, uh, uh, the, like, 13, 14 years of living in, in Dubai. I've always been inspired by the vision of the country, the vision of uh, its leadership and the way they have been continuing building the city, right? So it's a great hub to bring technology and business together. It has definitely one of the most friendly uh, environment for doing business, for starting a business. In terms of even the uh, regulation, it's one of the most friendly one, uh, I would say, across uh, definitely the neighboring countries and maybe even globally. 
uh, saw the team at a wisdomized little insight into what they're up to. Okay, time now for the roundup. It's over to you, Ash. A new AI-powered app developed by Dubai-based property company Real Estate will enable buying and selling properties in the city accessible to buyers from around the world at a single click. The soon-to-be-launched app will also double up as a crucial market data provider to developers to help make decisions on what projects are to be built and at what price points to sell. I think this is, is quite interesting. But to be able to buy property just at a click away, I mean, for me personally, I need to go and see the property be in there, I don't know, say a little prayer and see if this <laughs> is meant to be. Are you guys comfortable buying a property just at the click of a button without actually physically being there? I think it depends how much money you got. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it, how many of us bought property off plan without seeing anything other than some mock-ups? Especially in this region, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but do you think this is really going to help developers, Tom? Yes. Uh, I think it's, it, it, it goes back to the point that a lot of people are making. It makes the process more efficient. Um, so before you've wasted a trip and a two hour journey across town and tried to find parking and things like that to go into a property that wasn't the property you wanted to look at in the first place, you've been able to get a good idea of what you're going to look at. So you're sort of negating some of those issues. The other thing I would say about this as well, and I'm sure Karim would, would back me up on this, it, it's, it's evidence of PropTech is coming out. We're seeing so many other um, new startups, new technology coming out here. We're getting funding from a number of uh, investors here in this part of the region. And the more of that we've got here, it becomes more of a hub to sort of develop these things. And we'll get more talent coming in here to try and launch their products. So I think it's a win-win. Absolutely, because now all the AI we've been hearing about now has just been the basic technology. Yep. But now what we need is the layer that comes on top of it. And we see a lot of investments from the UAE government in uh, the, the compute power that you need to actually be able to do this, but also in terms of attracting the entrepreneurs who are going to build the next killer app. We don't know what the next killer app is, but it's property, it's finance, it's media, anything Health, you could think of. Yeah, any of the above. yeah, yeah. Indeed. Right. Well, next up, we find out how artists are keeping up with the rise of AI with the director of Create Labs, plus Nick, the live jazz in the studio, brings us right here. It's going to be good. Stick with us.